Hello and welcome to another technical analysis video. Today we want to take a look at if it's better to use the logarithmic scale or the linear scale in TradingView. Um, so TradingView is the application that I normally use. We're taking a look here at the Cardano US, US dollar chart um, from Binance and we are starting this chart end of 2017 till today. And this is like the default setting. This is called a linear chart that you find very often as a default setting in many trading applications, technical analysis applications. You can find it on CoinGecko if you're into, into crypto, but generally this applies to all markets like gold, you know, any commodities, stocks and shares and whatever. So there's always the possibility of having a logarithmic scale or a linear scale. Personally, I prepare the linear scale. Um, just feels a bit more natural to me. But um, generally, sometimes when I look at the longer term time scale, I like to use the logarithmic scale. And I'm just going to show you how, the, how you know, the difference looks. And then I'm going to explain what the, different, the difference actually is. So if I click on logarithmic, you can find it down here in the um, right hand corner. Then you get something like that. Right. So that is now the Cardano chart from the beginning in a logarithmic scale. Let's go back to the linear scale just to talk to you about the difference. So the linear scale on the vertical axis here, which is the price um, axis on here, basically the linear scale will show a difference. You know, you, you can see the absolute dollar values always spaced out in the same way with the, with the same distance. So on here you have a change, for example, from yeah, zero dollars to one dollars. That would be the same distance as from one dollars to two dollars and from two dollars to three dollars. Yeah. So this all goes by absolute dollar value and they're always spaced um, equal. So zero to one dollars, one to two dollars, two to three dollars. They're always spaced with the same distance, even though a change from zero to one dollars is a higher percentage change than from one to two dollars and from two to three dollars. So the actual percentage change from one to two dollars is lower than from zero to one dollar. And also from two to three dollars, the actual percentage change is lower than from one to two dollars. All right, so it always looks impressive if you see charts like that, but the actual percentage change is lower the higher you go. Um, that is why looking at a long term graph like that, and also to really understand the percentage changes, it's sometimes helpful to look at the logarithmic chart. Because what you can already see here on the right hand side is that the higher the price goes, the um, narrower the actual distance gets between the actual dollar value. So on a logarithmic chart, for example, the distance between one and two dollars would be the same as between 10 and 20 dollars. Yeah. So because it is all going by percentages and that just actually shows you also, it helps you to understand these charts long term because it really shows you that, well, the actual percentage change in the beginning was just a lot higher than what we currently see here um, this year, for example. Right. So this is sometimes very helpful to understand. Many people only look at the linear chart and then think, you know, more well, massive gains now. But um, sometimes forget that this is all, you know, going by just go by percentage changes. And especially if you look at a long term graph to do technical analysis from a long term point of view, the logarithmic chart can sometimes be helpful. However, I personally probably use the linear scale, which is this one, probably like 95% of the time, because very often I don't look at the very long term, I oftentimes look at the daily or even the four hour or the hourly charts. And when I go, for example, into the, let's say the hourly, um, and I go with that here, I, I like the linear, which is once much more, I think it's much more accurate for me, works much better for me. If I go logarithmic, sometimes it messes things up a little bit, it throws things around and I don't really like that. So I personally like definitely on the shorter term time frame. So I'm talking about hourly, four hour, daily and maybe even um, maybe even weekly I like to use the well no weekly I would probably use the logarithmic one but still 95% of the time I probably use the linear one just because for me it comes more natural but if I really would take a look at the whole chart yes sometimes I use the logarithmic one 
A lot of it comes down to personal preference as well. Um, there isn't really technically a, a right or wrong way. Over the years, I've used the linear one just in a preferable way. And, you know, for me, it has, it has really worked. So it all comes down to personal preference as well. But as I said, 95%, the linear one, um, what you need to be aware of, if you just switch, for example, to logarithmic one and you want to use it, and if you then use certain tools, for example, like the Fibonacci retracement tool, what you have to do, you actually have to set that to logarithmic as well. So you can click on that and you can go onto the settings here. And then somewhere here, you will find the option to um, adjust it to log scale. So FIB levels based on log scale, you need to activate that because you can see already how they change in the background. And if you don't do that, and if you do logarithmic, and if you don't do the some of the tools, you just have to adjust to uh, log scale. Obviously the most um, popular one oftentimes used is the FIB extend, uh, or the Fibonacci retracement tool. Um, however, that's another reason why I tend to use just the linear one. First of all, I look at shorter time frames, oftentimes, and um, you know when I when I use the Fibonacci tool on a shorter time frame, I don't always have to adjust it. And also, if I look at longer time frames, I still tend to use the linear scale very often because. Um, I still get a good understanding of the overall trend and I use moving averages and it's just helpful to do it that way for me. It's personal preference and it's just important, I think, to be aware that there is this difference and that these two different kinds of charts or ways of drawing it on the axis um, exist. So there are many traders around who, who've been in the space for a couple of years or so, still don't know that this difference exists. and. To be honest, you can probably get away with it without using the logarithmic at all, but sometimes it can be helpful just to get an overall understanding of percentage changes in the market over a longer period of time. So I hope that cleared it up. If you still have questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you like the content, please hit the like button. And it'd be grateful if you could subscribe if you want to see more videos like that, more technical analysis tutorials. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you.